Um, <laughs> great. So I'm Marie. I'm a contributing editor on the MISC. And I'm Jeremy Kaplan. I'm editor in chief of DigitalTrends.com. Great. So thank you so much for joining me today. Um, so we just have a few quick questions for you. Just trying to get to know you a little better. Play it on me. Um, great. Um, so what's the weirdest story you've ever worked on? The weirdest story I've ever worked on. On the spot, um, <laughs> I, yeah, I'm having a hard time thinking of any really weird stories. Uh, or have you met anyone? Have you met a weird person? Or um, yeah, in in writing a story, have you ever had to have any like strange interactions? Or? I'll tell you. Here's the here's the the weirdest story in person. Are Great, both all packaged into one. one. <laughs> uh, Love it. I was working at Fox News before I joined Digital Trends. Which was a great experience. Uh, every day was something different because it's the news. You know, mm -hmm. you've got a wide array of things that are happening in the world, and it's pick one, tackle it, and sink your teeth into it however you can. So I'd gotten word that there was this crazy scientist who thought he had found evidence of alien life. Mm. I was the science and technology editor. I have to go yeah. get that story. So I called the guy up, and I interviewed him, and he was every bit as crazy as you <laughs> might think he would be. So I kind of ran with the story because it was crazy and interesting yeah and uh, got a little bit of blowback for so what kind of angle a crazy guy so what kind of angle did you uh, take on it or did he just speak for himself <laughs> it, it be, I made it a serious story because mm -hmm. I called up some uh, NASA scientists and said what, what, what do you make of what this guy is saying and they were like well if it's true it's crazy that's <laughs> so that kind of legitimized things so we just sort of ran with it wow that's a good story that sounds awesome Try um, to get some buzz yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, if you could interview anyone, who would you interview? Anyone at all. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I guess meeting that crazy scientist really sets the bar pretty high. <laughs> um, so think carefully. I don't know if I'm gonna go back there. Uh, well, I'm in the technology arena, so I right. I have to stay there. Mm -hmm. And uh, Bill Gates is a great figure. You know, you, you got to go for one of the top guys. Yeah. Um, what's nice about him is he's, he seems like a really interesting, engaging, and fun guy, mm -hmm. as well as being astoundingly dorky. Right. Um, I imagine if you met him, he'd be astoundingly <laughs> dorky, but I bet he also have a lot of really fascinating things to say. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the agency, I'm sorry, the organization that he works with now, the Gates Foundation, mm -hmm. they do all sorts of fantastic work. They work on malaria research and whatnot, and just learning where he thinks things are going to be in the future, I think that'd be pretty interesting. Yeah, so I guess you just touched on that a little bit, but to follow up, what what would you really want to know about? What was what would be like one question? If you could only ask him one question, what would you ask him? Well, I'd ask him where, where we're going to be in ten years. I mean, this is a guy that basically built the technology world that we live in today, um, and also it's interesting how he has shifted into the world of science. Mm -hmm. uh, I bet he'd have a pretty interesting vision of where we're going to be ten years down the road. Which I mean, if you look at where we are, how far we've come in the past ten years, where are we going to be by? 2025. Yeah. I would love to know, for one, as um, a soon-to-be graduate. <laughs> um, so now for a little bit of a lighter, even lighter question. Um, do you have a favorite punctuation mark? I live for the semicolon. Oh. Misused, abused, and so useful. Wow. What do you think about what Vonnegut has to say about the eye, semicolon? No, you didn't. <laughs> Um, I said, what do, what do you think about what um, Vonnegut has to say about the semicolon? Vonnegut, is he known for abusing it? He's known for um, maligning <laughs> it. I am one of the few people, I think, who thinks he's a terrible writer. Oh. Uh, it, the most boring, banal, <laughs> unoriginal, yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so moving along um, into the realm of social media, um, do you have a favorite Twitter personality or Twitter account? Uh, well, there's tons of them. Um, I'm a big fan of Drunk Hulk. Drunk Hulk smash when he's drunk. It's consistently makes me chuckle. Good <laughs> stuff. Um, and how do you think Vassar has changed since you've graduated? Uh, well, it's, I, it's changed dramatically. I mean, I, I graduated in 96. Um, we all had computers, but we didn't really have laptops or computers in the classroom or anything like mm -hmm. that. 
um, I imagine that the classroom experience is, it, it's actually kind of hard for me to wrap my head around it. Um, a lot of elementary schools are big into Chromebooks these days. Mm -hmm. They have these systems where you just walk in and you grab one and use them. Uh, that's pretty transformative, but it's, it's kind of hard to even conceive of what, of how classroom experience has changed just in the short period of, period of time since I was in school. Yeah, some professors are really strict about no laptops and some are fine with it. And then sometimes you have uh, those interactive whiteboards, smart mm -hmm. boards, which are kind of silly, but... Yeah, it really throws time. some older professors as well. Um, okay, so now we're going to do our headline challenge. Um, so I'm going to read you a prompt and you're going to have a few seconds. No ticking clock, no, no. No ticking clock. Just go for it. All right, I'll do just, my best. Yeah, just go for it. Um, Throughout their time with their respective sports, these athletes have come to develop their own habits and rituals before competition to help get them in the right mindset to win. These rituals include foregoing showers, drinking mass quantities of energy drinks and diet sodas, and braiding elaborate hairdos. Um, so that was a story that ran in sports a couple weeks ago. So if you had to write a headline for it. Oh, a headline for that, for that. For, for that article. Tough one because I'm such a geek that I'm not very much <laughs> of a sports guy. Um, hmm. uh, something that would play off of superstitions. Mm. I don't know. I don't know. I'd, it would take me some time. That's fair enough. We won't press you too hard the on that The most important one. part of a story is the headline. You can't just bang it out right here. Yep, that's fair enough. Okay, well, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Sure. Thank you.